Anybody who was around to see it will remember the Sex Pistols being interviewed on the nightly news. They effed and blinded Johnny Rotten with particular enthusiasm and frequency. And host Bill Grundy, remember Bill Grundy, was suitably appalled along with most of his viewers. Except, of course, the kids. The kids loved it. The thing about punk was that it had to shock. Even Janet Street Porter was just a little bit startled to begin with. Well, the first thing you notice is that punk rock fans look as devastating as their music sounds. Torn clothes are held together with safety pins. There's lots of black leather and bizarre hair. And the whole idea is to shock outsiders. What's your dress made from? Uh, you know, you feel one of the, the crowd. What do you do? What do I do? Uh, typing. You're not a mouse, you know, like Mike Oldfield fans, you know? But could you hear in the background of that scene there, they were playing All Right Now by the Free, <laughs> which were not punk. Anyway, <laughs> um, incredibly, punk was born 30 years ago, and a lot of those kids you saw in that film are in their 50s now. Music journalist and punk rocker John Robb has written this book. It's called uh, Punk Rock, an Oral History. He's here now with Pete Shelley from legendary punk band The Buzzcocks, which spawned a whole television series, really, uh, Toy Wilcox, <laughs> and guitarist with The Damned, Captain Sensible. But no glasses and Redberry tonight. No. Uh, <laughs> They're in a the museum in Croydon, aren't they? They are, yeah. It uh, makes you feel old, doesn't it? Because <laughs> <laughs> you are old, Captain. <laughs> yeah, but call him Captain. I said earlier, I said, what, I mean, what are we supposed to call him? And they, they, they said call Captain, captain. is it? You have to yeah. call him a Captain. Well, you like Sir Ben my, Kingsley. If I knew my name. career was going to last more than, like, three weeks, I would have chosen a better name to be part of. <laughs> That's the point, isn't it? Nobody thought at the time, nobody thought the punk was going to run and run and run and still be influential and bands that today describe themselves as punk, don't they? Well, yeah. I think, quite honestly, nobody cared if it was going to run and run. I yeah. mean, it really was the ethos of yeah, not if, caring. If you were young like I was, like a fan, you hoped it was going to run and run because we were so into the music. We didn't want it to end after six months. Yeah, so yeah. it's been great it's carried on for 30 years. Good, you've got a book out <laughs> there. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> even better, getting paid to write about when it. Yeah. Say, Joy, didn't you, you go to one of the Sex Pistols' very first concerts in Brum? Yeah. And they I, got booed off. Yeah, I was in the audience. It was on U Street, Birmingham. It, it was unbelievably bad. But <laughs> I was talking to John about it, that suddenly all these misfits who didn't know where they belonged ended up in this club that night and we kind of looked at each other and thought this is where we belong but the sex pistols were so bad and we did not respond to them and johnny walked off after three songs did he swear at you yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we were just completely blank you know we did not know what had hit us we almost needed the education of the next 12 months to tell us that they were going to be really tell good. me the truth did you when they made it huge did you say, yeah, we were, uh, we were at the Sex Pistols when we were in yeah, we could see it coming, yeah? Yeah, yeah I've been yeah, seeing yeah, it for yeah. 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Pete actually put them on in Manchester in 76. Yeah. yeah. One yeah, of the first yeah. gigs, wasn't well, it? Well, it was the most on commercial farmer music you could imagine. Yeah. Because it, it was different. It still sounds it, to be honest. Well, actually, it's good we haven't lost it then. <laughs> well, should we have a look at no. the Sex Pistols? Because they, they, they were the first, basically. I mean, a lot of people claim to have been the first, but really, they well, they're were the ones that the started it, really, yeah. They put it up another level and they made it really exciting. They put the message over to everybody. Yeah. And of course, the down there pretty early as well, weren't the captain? Yeah. Well, I think well, we, we got some. Don't we? We had the first punk single. It wasn't the Sex Pistols. At all. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, show, we'll show a clip of yours in a minute. I promise okay. you. But um, this is Johnny Rotten um, talking, and it's so he interesting. Starts off talking. He was a re he's a rebel, but he pronounced his his T's. I said <laughs> it and don't, as you'll hear here. Don't accept the old order. Get rid of it. What do you think about bands like the Stones? I don't. <laughs> I don't even consider them a band. They're more like a business. What a business. I am a Don't know what I want. I know what I want. I want to I want to that just cut, looks now just as angry as it was at the time. Yeah, it still, it still makes you want to smash things up. It still makes you want to smash that table up. <laughs> Does yeah. it really? Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it if you want. No, 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 no. I think that did, you, did you like happy. it, though? Was that your music when you well, were younger? Well, no, because I was... Yeah. I mean, when was that? About 1976? 76, 76 yeah, 30 years, I, mean, I had yeah. a little baby, but... Well, I had two little babies. I had twins in 77. So that whole Queen's Silver Jubilee, and mm. you remember that whole God Save the Queen, and it got to number oh. one, except they wouldn't let it get yeah, to number yeah, one, Yeah, yeah, how pathetic was that? Yeah, yeah, yeah all, I know, but I, to me, by. it kind of it all passed me by. I, what about I you, Richard? Though, you? Well, I was 20 in 1976, yeah. but I was terribly seriously building my career 
has been terribly serious about being in local radio and then local television. And I, I, barely, I was barely aware of punk. Because we were just wondering this before, if you had a bit I wasn't a punk, no, kind of no, no, I wasn't a punk, no, I was in a suit and tie. Yeah. I was in a suit and tie um, in, in, my, in my, the first half of my 20s. I only got out of a tie about four years ago when I came to Channel 4. But what was it that appealed then? <laughs> the, the, the anger, the music, the clothes, the, the politics, the, the clothes, whole, certainly. everything about it is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. When you look at what's going on before in the 70s, it was so boring, wasn't it? And when yeah. this came along, it was, it was such a thrill. What was before punk? 20 minute guitar solos. <laughs> which which, which <laughs> Captain Cap, 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 Cap plays now on stage? <laughs> drum, <laughs> drum solos. And like, it was just completely naff. It, it, it just seemed as though you had to have a, a degree in music or something. Ah. But it was a fantastic time for women. Because if you weren't phenomenally beautiful, you were invisible. And then suddenly punk came along. And you really counted as long as you looked different to everyone right. else. Was that you, Toya? That was me. <laughs> that short, fat one suddenly. Got noticed. Well, that's true, that's what's great about it. You didn't have to be like glamorous, you don't have to be a celebrity because you know, like nowadays to be famous, you have to be like celeb culture and you have to like, like before we came to the show today, they're like painting all the spots off your face and, and your bags and your eyes, and that's yeah. rubbish, isn't it? Great thing about punk is warts and all, anybody could do it. It's DIY, it's fantastic. That's why I thought when they uh, when we went into the makeup room here, they should have made us look worse. <laughs> <laughs> they did with you, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> let's see a bit of you too. Let's, see, let's see a bit of you in, in, in the damned. And this is, um, now, well, you tell us what year this is actually, see if you can remember it. Here we go. Don't you run away that way. You can come back another day. I've got a new rose, I got a good. Yes, I knew that I always would. I can't stop to mess around. Like a brand new rose in town. So were you were you basically trying to got to watch my language now. I don't want to do what they did in front of Red Grundy, Bill Grundy. Um, were, were you conscious... Red Grundy! <laughs> not Red Grundy. Isn't it? Um, <laughs> were you deliberately trying to um, brown off the, uh, the, 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 the music establishment, make them think, you know, that you were breaking their rules? Yes. Well, yeah. I honestly think that, you know, what, what happened was, I mean, I don't know about you, Pete, and the rest of the guy, uh, the rest of the bands, but we were reacting against what was going b before and and when somebody first described the damned as a punk group I, I was dumbfounded I didn't know what it was really you didn't about. think of yourself as no that. I think uh, the journalists grouped us into this kind of movement which yeah you know which was a, re a reaction we were so different to what met, what went before it's a bit like the Celts we watched a program about the Celts on the, on, on, on the telly a couple of weeks ago and you know the Celts never existed as, as they never called themselves Celts they were, it was just a name, a label. Oh, was I given saw to that, them. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good yeah. show, wasn't it? What about you? What, what, what did you that? think you were doing? Were you a Celt? Oh, were you a Celt? I, think I was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm still after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, were you, um, what were you trying to do with your band, with the Buzzcocks? Well, it was, it was this idea that, but that music had become something which you couldn't really get involved in. It was yeah. something that other people did, you know. Mm. Was, with mood synthesizers. It was a spectator sport. Mm. Uh, there's a, well, there's once an early gig we played with uh, with Sad Cafe in Manchester. Oh yeah. No, this is in, in Blackburn. It and would there was be so much gear on the stage that we had to play on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so it was much simpler. It was just a big amp, three guitars, yes. set of drums, and a lot of swearing. Because yeah. music yeah. is simple. It's, it's simple to do. And that's what any kids watching the show should you know to find yeah. that out as well. You know, it's like the Arctic Monkeys in Manchester now. You know, they only fall yeah. a year ago they start playing their guitars. Yeah, they yeah. sold a million records. And How if fantastic you knew is three that? guitar chords, you, and, and you knew someone who was willing to play those three chords, then you could write an album. So does that mean that the early, <laughs> that the early bands were a bit rubbish <laughs> then? <laughs> like the no, no way. Were they rubbish weren't rubbish because the energy and the ideas were fantastic, but they weren't from that middle class, over-educated yeah. background. Over Everything it was, was raw. It was what? It was rubbish, but it was glorious rubbish. <laughs> well, right. more glorious but it wasn't rubbish. He's just been no, no. We just heard New Rose, and what a, what a fantastic song that is, you know. Yeah. And let's see, let's see this, this is you oh. in nine, Well, again, you tell us the year, right? Yes. You, can, you remember the song? It's 1978, actually. Oh, I was asking him, right? <laughs> well, I thought I'd just say <laughs> it. Right. Go on then, let's have a look at it. I run the risk of losing you, and that's worse. And there was I with two little babies in baby bouncers, and that was all going on around me. <laughs> you couldn't be there. In Norwich. <laughs> and I, was <laughs> I was in a suit in, in Carlisle. <laughs> but, because, I mean, you were, your outrageous hairstyles and everything, all that bright red shock of hair and everything, that, that was all that. But I just assumed gradually, because you became um, quite famous as an actress as well, and I just assumed that was you. I mean, you, but not, uh, not punk. I came you. out of Birmingham. I went to public school. I came from quite a strict family background, and I knew I didn't believe long in the get married have kids zone and punk allowed me to really express myself and I started dyeing 
my hair when I was about 14, much to my mother's dismay. And then when I moved to London and really discovered punk, I felt like the outsider that had found a home because I just was not like your normal, quiet, attractive yeah, yeah. woman. There was just nothing <laughs> like that about me. Yeah. And when you look at Susie Banshee and Jordan, who are behind us, you know, it gave the real, us... The real Jordan. Not the not real not Jordan, not yeah. It gave us the freedom and the confidence yeah. to just be different from what we were expected yeah. to be. All right, guys, uh, thank you very okay. much. We should say, it's a really interesting book, this. It's a really good read. Punk rock and oral history. How far have you got into it, Richard? Uh, I finished it, mate. Finished yeah. it bed last yeah. night. Don't you quiz me. <laughs> please, <laughs> please buy it. I need the money. It's out now. <laughs> <laughs> Go on,